All right, so this video is going to go through uh, finding the shortest path in a network. So I've got here a network drawn. You can see that each of the nodes are represented with circles. Um, they're all labeled and given a letter, so nodes are indicated with an A, B, C, D, etc. Um, all of the edges or arcs are indicated um, as the joins between the nodes, um, the, the connections, and each of those connections have a distance on them. So the shortest path is basically there are a lot of different algorithms that are used in order to an algorithm is a process that are used to figure out the shortest path in a network and this can be really handy because we can model things like um, you know uh, project management using a network and knowing the shortest path within that can be quite handy so there are lots of real world applications for this um, but what we need you to be able to do is do it in the abstract so uh, deject I can never pronounce his name. Mr. D's algorithm, um, often called dynamic programming, is one of the best and it is the one that we're going to work through today to show you. So basically what he does is he grows the shortest path um, to all of the nodes from the starting node. Um, there may be, when you do the shortest path, there may be more than one equally shortest path. So you may find that there's more than one path with equal shortest distance. Um, some cases may ask you to actually find all of them, but most applications are just to find a shortest path. Um, so what we're going to do is um, I'll get you to pause the video, go to your OneNote, and in that OneNote are the six steps for D's algorithm <laughs> um, that you're going to be following um, through with this video. So I'll get you to go, have a read of them, write them into your book so that you've got them in front of you while we go through the steps here, because I won't um, have them up here, I'll just summarize them. Okay, uh, now that you have those, let's do a quick summary down here. So first step is start node, we color that. The second step, we're looking at finding the closest node. Okay. Um, then, third step is um, coloring and writing the distance in the node. Next one is to find um, the next closest. Um, one step from colored and then we again color the node and write the distance in the node so you should have read that and we repeat until finished till we get to the end so that's just a quick reminder of those those steps um, you will have got them down in full from the one note okay so uh, let's start with pink all right so we'll color a as our starting point, okay, that's our, our starting point. From there, um, we're going to have a look at, okay, so B, E, G, and F are next to A. They are the next ones, B, E, G, and F. And I know that because there are four that come off of A. So they're the ones that are closest to A. So what we need to find is the one that is the closest. So if I have a look, I've got three, eight, five, and two. So that means F is the closest. So what I do is I color it, but that's gonna be a little hard in the video here. So I'm actually gonna write it in color. So it's gonna be a two and I'm gonna color that yellow. Okay, so then I'm going to, and write the distance in F. So next colored nodes from F, okay, are now G, B, nodes next to the colored nodes are B, E, and G. Yes, B, G, and it was E, okay? So these are the two colored ones, because I've written in. So distance of B to A is three, E to A, Eight and G to A is five. 
um, or 4 through F. So if I go 2, 4, yeah, so indirectly it's 4. 3 is the smallest, so B is the closest. Okay, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to colour B with a 3 distance from A and colour there. Next node, that is um, the nodes next to the coloured ones are now C, E, G. Yeah, that one's G. They're the ones that are next to coloured nodes. So, distance from C to B is 3, E to A is 8, C to A, sorry, I am looking for A, C to A is 6 through B, so it's 3, 6, back to A, sorry, I forgot that, so it's 6, E to A is 8, G to A, so we're always back to our starting, is 5, direct, or 2, 4 through F, 4. So basically F is the smallest at 4, back to A, so we're going to go through G, so that's going to be a 4, and colour. It's a coloured node. Actually, I probably should have done that. Yeah, that makes this one a coloured node. Okay, so now we're going to look at the next closest. So we've got H, E, C. Yeah. So C, we've got three and three is six, and then from E we've got eight, or we could go. 6 and 4 from E, so 6 plus 2 plus 2, so that's 10 as we go indirectly. Um, H to A is going to be 7, 2 and 2, so that's 11 all the way through. So basically our closest is going to be C through B, so that's only 6. That's only six, so we'll circle that. So basically all we're doing is we keep going to what are the nodes that are one step away from the colored nodes, and then having a look at which one is actually the closest, whether it's direct or indirectly through other nodes, which one is the closest to A. So that eventually we actually end up with the shortest path. Uh, so now we've got C, our coloured nodes are still E, D, J, H, J, D, E, H, yeah, J, D, E and H are all coming from the coloured nodes. So J to A, let's go, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then we've got D to A, so 2, plus the six, so we know that that's it. Once we hit there, it's six, so we could just go six plus six, 12. So here, six plus two is eight. Then we've got E to A. So E to A, we can go direct eight. We could go six and four, 10. We could go six and four, 10. So 10, 10, so 10 through this way, 10 through this way, or eight direct. Then we have um, H from A, we can go 7 and 4, which is 11, or we can go through C, E direct, oh no, sorry, that's E direct, H to A, yeah, it is 11. So basically, if we go E direct at 8 or D with 2 this way, that's 8 as well. So what we're actually going to, we'll, we'll go with this one. This makes it 8. So we're actually going to go with this one, 8 direct. Yeah, Go with E because it's a direct route instead of going through the others. 
Um, okay, so now we've got the nodes. So we've got H coming off of this one, D, J. H, D, and J, okay, are our coloured ones. So let's have a look at what we've got. So H would be 7 and 4, 11. Um, it would be 8 and 3, 11. D could be 8 and 2, 10. D could be 6 and 2, 8. J could be 6 and 6, 12. So basically, if we go D through C, that takes us to eight. So we're gonna go with that one, eight. It's still the shortest out of all of them. Okay, so now we've got J, we've got I, and we've got H. So that's all of ours now. So let's just go back and start looking. So, hmm, we will go. 7 and 4, so it's 11. We could go 8 and 3, that's 11. We could go 8 and, uh, sorry, 8 and 6, so it's 14. For H, we could go 6 and 6, 12. We could go 5 and 8, so that's 13. Mm. I think that's all of them. Okay, so basically, we end up with two lots of 11, yeah? So we've got eight, nine, 10, 11, this way, and we've got seven and four this way. So, I'm gonna color, put 11 here. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through G. This is a nice direct path here. We could go that way. Could probably go that way if you like. H or E or G. Sorry, I'm just double checking. Yeah, I've done that. Um, okay, so shortest path from, oh, actually it probably would have been helpful for me to say that at the beginning, wouldn't it? If I had said shortest path between A and H. is what we're looking for. Now basically all we would have done is just we just we just keep going until we reach the end. Really? Um, total distance is 11. So now we could say um, a shortest path because we know that there are two. Oh actually it's not through is it? It's from. G H A F G H gets us to eleven. Um, which is eleven kilometers long. Now that's important because we need I mean it's M three, so it's an informed statement. We need to actually say that. We know that it's eleven. That's the shortest path, okay, shorter than any of the others to get there except for one. So you could also have had A, E, H. So A, E, H would also have been acceptable. So there were two times there where we had to choose one. It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, you still would have ended up with those two as the shortest paths. And as I said earlier, sometimes there are more than one pathway to get through.
Okay, for this next example, we're going to just have a look at using the network to find the shortest path either with or without a node. So the first one I'm going to look at is going to be, so A, we're going to do from D to H, including E. And B, then we'll look at from B to C, to C, um, not including D. Okay, so two different ways that we can look at, um, look at this. So basically, um, I've got my network drawn up here. Again, it's got numbers, but this time these numbers are actually dollar amounts. So if you can imagine this being a network, um, perhaps like a plan for uh, laying cables or wiring, um, each of the nodes represents a building, and each of those connections, those arcs or um, edges, are basically showing the price it's going to cost to connect through from that building to that building in, the, in that way. Um, so when we look at finding the shortest pathway, the shortest pathway will find us the cheapest pathway, yeah? So the, the less um, numbers at the end, the cheaper it's going to be. Okay, so first of all, we're going to find the shortest path from D to E because if you look over here, when we include a node, just here, we find the shortest path from the short start point to the node that's included, so from D to E, and then from E to H, so from that included node to the end point. So instead of just going from start to finish, just finding that short path, when we have an included node, we need to actually find shortest to that node, and then shortest from the node to the end point. So it's just like two lots. So let's start with um, D. So we're starting at D. It's our start point. And then basically, we'll find shortest from D to E is where we want to go. Um, so our nearest ones are going to be I, looks like it's getting further away, four, four, or two dollars to be, okay. So we could go either of these, I'd say four or two. Then we can go looking at to E. So two and nine. That's 11 or four and three. That's seven. So I'm going to go four and then three. Okay. So that's seven, whereas this, that would be 11, okay, that way. So once I've gotten there, now I find the shortest path from E through to H. That's where I want to end up. But I have to go from E. So I can go nine, I can go four, I can go three. Hmm. I'm probably thinking three and three. That's nine. Or I could go four seven and five, that's definitely more than nine. So if I add another three, that takes me to 10. And another three, that takes me to 13. So I can just double check to ensure, but basically I can then write for A, the shortest path, from D to H, including E, is, we did D, C, E, D, C, E, G, H, at $13. Yes, excellent. Okay, so next, we're going to look at um, from B to C, not including D. So what we actually have to do is we have to remove D from our network for this. So that means this, D, the node, and all of its edges. 
So for this question only, oh, sorry, not that bit. All of these are gone, all of them. So I have to get from B here, and I need to get down to C here. Now, I could go nine and three, that's 12. Or I could go four and four, that's eight, and three, that's 11. Or nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah, or in too far. That kind of looks like it, four, seven, five, that's kind of roundabout. If this is gone, my shortest path is going to be from here at four through to here at another four, that makes it eight. <laughs> and down here with another three makes it 11. Therefore, the shortest path from, oh, got the R, from B to C, not including, not including, what did I get rid of, D, yep, not including D, is B, A, E, C, at $11. And that there is shortest path. So basically you've got two kinds of methods. You can use um, Mr. D's algorithm um, and total points to anyone that can work out how to say that properly. <laughs> um, you can use that algorithm basically starting at your starting node and coloring as you go one step from the colored nodes each time to find the shortest paths. You actually end up finding a few. Or if your network's a little smaller and you're just looking at a shortest path, either including or not including a particular node, you can use this same method here. So we really were just finding the shortest um, uh, and quickest path. There were only a couple of different options each time. So make sure you um, complete the work that you can find on the OneNote so that you can practice this. Um, good luck.